Good morning. I'm continuing my discussion on the Planck length. The Planck length due to Max Planck. Max Planck lived between 1858 and 1847. Again, that's this detail during the last talk. We'll also mention George J. Stoney, Irish, before his time. He came out with Stoney units, and we can talk about how the Stoney units and the Planck units are related via a factor of 137 square root. All right, now the Planck length is constructed from the constants G, universal constant of gravitation, H cross, reduced Planck's constant, H over two pi, H is 6.26 by 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds, and H cross is 1.054 by 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. C is the speed of light. C is given by one over mu zero epsilon zero. I don't have time to look up those read now, but you can check up mu zero is the permeability from of free space, crops up from magnetism. And epsilon zero is the permeability. The permittivity of free space crops up in Coulomb's law and many other aspects of electricity, the electric field. Okay, so we combine these units whose values have those and we don't know why they are there. Okay, if we remove one of these units, we cannot get a length. The Planck length, LP, is 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 35 meters when you put the numbers in there and work it all out. I did that the last day too. Uh, but you should do that as an exercise. Now we'll go on to the Planck time. Time, the distance over speed. So we'll take a distance and divide by the speed. Divide the Planck length by C, and we get the Planck time. So it's about 0.5 by 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds. Finally, you can get the Planck mass. For the Planck mass, I'm going to give it as an exercise to you guys to work out this. Do the same equation that I did for the Planck length, except I put the one over the kilogram to get mass instead of length or time. And you will get a construct looking something like this, Planck mass. Planck mass is rather larger than you might expect. Okay, so let's continue. What's the significance of the Planck length? There are many ways to look at it. start them all today. Today I'm just going to look at stony units really. The Planck maths, sorry, the Planck length could be interpreted as being um, a Compton wavelength, right? The wavelength, another way you can work it out too, it's the wavelength that a photon might have if the photon was to become a black hole. In other words, if a photon is not to emit another photon, which it doesn't, you can Hazard your guess as to you know a definition, 
has a significance of the plank length. I don't like the way the continued is written, so I'm getting rid of it. Now, I don't remember what year Stoney came out in the Proceedings of the Royal Dublin Society. I put it on the blackboard the last day. You can check it out. But Stoney units were invented when Stoney used the fundamental unit of electricity, the charge on the electron. charge on the electron, which was measured by J.J. Thompson, in close to the turn of the century. J.J. Thompson, one of the other people with a huge repertoire of Nobel Prize winning students. All right, so the Stoney units work like this. We derived an equation for the fine structure constant, one of the most fundamental objects in physics, not taught in high schools. It should be the first thing taught when you get into a little bit more um, physics, after you leave classical mechanics. Alpha, fine structure constant. This found by taking e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0, the permittivity of free space, h cross c. We have e. Check the units of the permittivity. Coulomb squares over newton meter squared. Okay, so the permeability of it. This could be the reciprocal. No, that's correct. All right, and C is the speed of light. Four pi is four pi, and when we put those numbers in, we get approximately one over one three seven. Now I can't remember exactly what that value was. for now. Okay, let's, let's work it out. Seven, three. G squared is 1 over 137, R.0073, and G, take the magnitude of the square root, it's actually got a negative sign still for it, it's the probability amplitude for an electron to emit or absorb a photon. It's in a Feynman diagram vertex, actually. Okay, so what else? If we take this constant here, we can construct a new set of units. We construct the Stoney units. We take the square root of alpha and multiply by the Planck length, we get the following. sign, the H cancels. The square root of alpha we said was already g.
now we get a new length. It's called, let's call it the Stoney length. Now George Stoney invented these absolute units way before Planck's constant was invented. What is the operation here? The operation is that when we multiply by the square root of alpha, we get rid of the h. We can also therefore talk about the stony time. Well, Ts is going to be Ls over C. cross. Which looks like the Planck time, except that it's got an e squared instead of um, the h cross. Okay? Now that's the same as multiplying the Planck time by the root alpha. Similarly, to get rid of the H cross in the Planck mass, we do the same thing, and that's your exercise. So here we are involved with a great bunch of units, and the question is, which is the most fundamental thing? Is it the H cross? Or the E squared over 4 pi epsilon 0? That's not clear. Now, I have a lot more to say on the Planck length, specifically when I talk about the entropy of a black hole. I'll come up with that whole set of uh, little ideas soon, and that is thermodynamics of a black hole. It's on the way. Okay, my injury is beginning to bother me, so I'm going to cut this off right now. I have to move the motorcycle. <clears throat>